All right, that's 10 fuel tanks. So this closer one here is out of my 94. So 94 to 97 are one part number. So these are a screw on fitting. And what I wanted to go for was push lock fitting. So this is the 98 and up gas tank and they came with push locks. So the earlier version has a ring that you rotate to unlock it. The later version has a large snap ring. These are not interchangeable sending units. The other difference on these tanks, on the older one, this uh, kind of vent tube, I guess, or overflow tube, went through the sending unit area. On the newer ones, it's down below right here. So you do lose about a gallon or a gallon and a half of capacity, just because I'm assuming that the difference was for safety. This was lowered, which leaves airspace up top. Other than that, it looks like these were stamped on the same exact machines. There you go, that's the difference between the earlier and the later second gen S10 tanks. Here's the fuel pumps and what these are. So this whole assembly is from the 98 and up S10s. This was from a 2001, but they should all be the same. So this has the push lock fittings on top. And this is from a 99 to 03 Silverado for Sierra. The Yukon and Tahoe are similar but different. They're shorter, which is the biggest problem, but the top is also a little bit different. The reason this is important, if you look at both of these models, the top is nearly identical, except for the electrical connectors, which aren't too important. But it has the push lock fittings. You can see both part numbers here that we're working with. Again, this one on the right is the S10. This one's the Silverado. Then if you go to where it seals into the tank, the S10 is right around 3.7. And Silverado is also right around 3.7. I wasn't taking the most accurate measurement there, but they're basically the same. But there is a difference. On the S10, there's this step. And then this is the seal for the S10. So this O-ring sits right against that step and gets squished down in there. On the Silverado, there is no step. So if you try to install this, this lip doesn't compress the O-ring. And you have to use this o-ring because of the tank design this is the seal on the silverado and it's it's just different the tank itself the tank seal lip is different so there's a couple ways you could do this one would be to make an eighth inch spacer that goes on this you can make it out of aluminum delrin whatever you wanted what i'm about to attempt is to cut this factory one, it's pretty much the, the right height. I just need to cut it right at the bottom of this lip and leave this lip on and remove this. I tried it with the O-ring slipped over this and it's just too big. So I'm gonna cut this and I'll see if that works. All right, so now we have about our eighth inch spacer. And on the stock one, on the inner edge, it's actually got a gap because the O-ring probably just compresses against this section. So I'm not too worried about that inner area. I'll clean it up later if I need to. So I'm gonna slip this O-ring on. And 
we'll see how that sits in the tank. You can kind of see in the tank here where that blue plastic is. That's kind of where the O-ring pushes against is this outer edge. It doesn't actually compress down so much as it compresses out. Another modification I'll need to make real quick is this is the, I guess, locator notch for the Silverado and it's slightly longer than the S10. So it doesn't quite fit in the spot it needs to be, so I'm going to trim that. All right, so I did a little bit of a trial and error and fitting and trimming, and I've got it fit in there, basically factory. It's real nice and tight. The retainer clip goes in. Uh, I'll pull it out and show you, but in, what I ended up doing on the, the black Silverado gasket was I trimmed it to exactly an eighth inch thick, and I used a belt sander for that because cutting the rubber, you get like an uneven edge, but light pressure on the belt sander and you can get a nice smooth edge. And then I cut this off of the outside diameter because it was hitting the tank and, and not allowing the blue o-ring to compress. So it's about an eighth inch off the outside diameter and then thinned it to an eighth of an inch. And it basically works perfect. And when I pull this out, you see it's going to pop up and that means I'm compressed good. See how it popped up so it's top of the white is actually above the metal now so you got real good compression in there and that was the o-ring letting go because it it was good it's in there so that's the final setup you see I had to trim the black one till it was I'd call it the same or slightly smaller than the blue o-ring uh, the other thing I had to do, the locator tab, I had cut it lengthwise. I also had to trim the bottom of it just a little bit. It sticks down about an eighth of an inch and it was hitting the tank before it was allowing the o-ring to compress. So that is the Silverado fuel pump sending unit in the S10 tank. And everything is factory and original except for that black o-ring. And I'll need to adapt the wiring to the Silverado wiring, but of course that's easy. Now I'll show you how to check if your fuel tank level sending unit is going to work with your factory gauges or not. So on these, if you look at them, S10 on the right, Silverado on the left, this looks like the exact same unit just flipped upside down. Don't know why they did that, but whatever. So what you do is you put your meter on resistance, which is ohms. get a reading of about 250. And then with the float move to the bottom, which would be an empty tank, I get a reading of about 40 ohms. So full 250, empty 40. Then we'll switch over to the S10 tank. So we'll move the float up, which would be full. We get a reading of 250. Then we move the float down to empty, and we get a reading of 40 again. Should work fine. You can just wire this right up to the factory S10 gauge. <laughs> 